keeping quiet. That's the poem we are going to study today and that's part of Flamingo textbook which is part of the CBSC class 12 English literature syllabus. This is written by Pablo Neruda which is actually the nickname, the pen name in fact of Neftali Ricardo Reyes Bosalto and you will need to know the exact spelling of the poet uh, should a passage from this particular poem come because sometimes they do ask who has written this particular lines in the poem and he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1971. So Pablo Neruda easily one of the best known poets which 20th century saw. So in that sense what he has said in this particular poem extremely significant because it's also an anti-war poem of sorts. Why is it called an anti-war? Why is it called an anti-war poem? Because he's basically talking about nuclear war, he's talking about biochemical warfare and basically making a point that all this is not in the larger interest of mankind. So before we start analyzing the poem line by line word by word let's understand what this poem is all about basically it's making an appeal for peace it's making an appeal for peace that's one of the major themes of this particular poem it's also talking about quiet introspection quiet as in q u i e t not q u i t e it's also talking about doing and indulging in quiet introspection introspection ka matlab hai looking inward andurini dekhna ek tarah se andar ki taraf apne apne jo man ke andar jhaank ke dekhna usko quiet introspection kehte hain the other important element in this particular poem is the digit 12 the digits 12 the number 12 and why and i'll tell you about why is this number so important in fact the poem starts and ends with the number 12 okay uh, the poet also makes a case that all activity should be suspended, that there should be a suspension of all activity and he lists out a whole lot of activities which should be completely stopped. Okay, now let's go through stanza by stanza as far as this poem is concerned. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for a second and not move our arms so much. Now, what is he trying to say? The poet is saying, telling each one of us in the world to count till 12. To count till 12 and not do anything. Remain absolutely still. Absolutely still till such time that we count from 1 to 12. No movement, no talking. And why is he talking specifically about 12? You have seen that I have drawn a clock out here. So 12 is the number of dials on the clock. 12 is the number of months in a calendar year, right? And if you see a clock, 12 is the time point where the two needles actually converge. They are on top of one over the other. So in that sense, it is the symbol of perfection when there is no movement because the moment you the one of the needles moves this side or this side, there is a sense of movement. But when they are right on top of each other, one is on top of each other, the other, there is absolute convergence. There is a sense of stillness and that is what uh, he is talking about. So Pablo Neruda basically asking everyone to unite, to unite like the hands of the clock so that is an important aspect why the digit 12 is so important he says in this particular the first the sixth sixth line it says and not move our arms too much now arms is actually a pun because while he's talking about our arms not to move it much arms also in the sense of weapons weapons of mass destruction also are referred to arms and armaments right so that is something which he is talking about. So he basically does not want anyone to talk, anyone to move, not do any activity whatsoever and count from 1 to 12. Okay, I hope the first stanza is clear. It would be an exotic moment, he says. He calls it an exotic moment. Without rush, without engines, we would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Now, 
the poet referring to it as an exotic moment. Now, the moment you use the word exotic, it means something which is very special, something completely out of the ordinary, right? And he says there wouldn't be any rush, there wouldn't be any engines. Basically, engines is a reference to modernization, it's a reference to industrialization. And he says, in a sudden strangeness. Now, why does he use the word strangeness out here? Because in this very technology driven world, in this very technology driven world that we are used to living in right now, we have actually become strangers to each other, right? Because we SMS the other person, we WhatsApp the other person, we talk over email, we actually uh, do not kind of see each other in flesh and blood. We have become in that sense a part of a virtual world, not a real world. Of course, this poem was written much before these kind of technologies existed. Uh, but basically trying to convey the point that we've all become strangers to each other. So when there will be this moment of exotic silence, that will become that will seem strange because that will be a strange kind of an emotion because that is not what we are used to feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. Someone who you are used to only chatting with or interacting with over Instagram and WhatsApp and suddenly you see the person in flesh and blood, it may seem a little strange because that's not what you are used to, uh, that's not the way you are used to communicating with the other person, right? So basically that's the larger point that Pablo Neruda is trying to make. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Okay, so now he's talking about fishermen and these lines are important, right? Because there is also a larger point that Pablo Neruda is talking about. He says the fishermen too would stop. They would not kill the whales in the sea. And while he's using the word fishermen, he does not mean that he's only talking about fishermen, right? He's not using fishermen only in the literal sense of the word. He's actually pointing to anyone who causes harm, anyone who kills someone else in this world, basically indulge in any kind of act of selfishness. So that is what Pablo Neruda is referring to. So each one of us, any one of us who actually indulges in an act of violence out arising out of a self-centered and selfish kind of a notion is actually a fisherman. And he says, we should not kill the whales, right? The salt gatherers, another important kind of aspect, the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Now here also, he says, the literal sense is that the salt gatherer would stop gathering salt and introspect on the harm that the gathering of the salt over a continuous period of time is actually hurting his own hands. What is the larger meaning? The larger meaning is what you need to also be conscious of because the larger meaning is that this is a reference to mankind in general because we are all the time in pursuit of our own happiness and our own selfish needs. We are harming the environment, the mother earth on which we are living, right? Global warming, climate change, deforestation, everything that we are doing, pollution, environmental pollution, all the harm that we are doing to mother earth and our future generations. So it's also a reference to man depleting the natural resources on mother earth. So the two references to the fisherman and the man who is collecting salt very very important so please make a note of this those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire victory with no survivors would put on clean clothes and walk about their brothers in the shade doing nothing now what is he referring to out here green war is the war being waged by man against the environment which i just referred to wars with gas is a reference to the chemical wars, basically biochemical warfare. Then wars with fire is a reference to nuclear war. So the poet calls these kind of wars as victories which have no survivors. And when you have no survivors, there will be no one to actually rejoice in and celebrate the victories because there will be no survivors, right? 
So he basically wants everyone to put on clean clothes. Now clean clothes is not wearing clean clothes, literally speaking. He wants everyone to cleanse their soul, which is so full of hatred and negativity. It is full of hatred and negativity and join hands and walk about with their brothers and join hands with their brothers, with their fellow human beings and just stay quiet. So he's basically kind of making an appeal that everyone needs to be together and not indulge in this game of hatred and violence against one another. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. These lines are important. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. I want no truck with death. You could be asked a question as to why is Pablo Neruda saying I want no truck with death because then you will need to explain what all has preceded these lines. If we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt the sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Now the poet here is kind of expanding on what he has started talking about of total inactivity, about suspension of activity that he has spoken about so far because he does not want to be misunderstood by readers like you and me. He is saying that I do not want man to be mentally inactive because when you are seeing you would be still and quiet till you count from 1 to 12, do you also become, become mentally inactive? So he says no, we should be and we will, we will be introspecting. We should be and we will be introspecting because the mind, the body may be calm, the body may be completely quiet but the mind will continue to introspect quietly. So he says life is actually an ongoing process. Life is actually an ongoing process and it should not be equated with death. So that's a very important statement that he's making. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. So he says that life uh, is what is important where the mind is continuously introspecting. It is not the same as death, right? And Neruda says that man has not understood himself. Man has not understood himself because in this very single-minded pursuit of reckless, senseless development and advancement, basically this is pushing him towards destruction of Mother Earth, of the ecology, of the environment and he is trapped in a race of very mindless kind of competition. That A is competing against B, B is competing against C, C is competing against D and that kind of goes on which is a very mindless kind of a rat race. So uh, in the process of doing so, he has sacrificed fulfillment of emotional needs and as a result, he has become very sad, interrupt the sadness of never understanding ourselves and he has become very isolated. He has become very lonely. He has become very alone in this while he is indulging in and he is busy with this rat race, right? The last stanza. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive, now I will count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. So he says, the earth, mother earth can actually teach us important life lessons because you sometimes see that you know we cut a tree and the tree trunks are put on the side but sometimes you see green shoots come up from even trunks which we give up as dead that they are completely dead but sometimes green shoots even come out of that. Similarly if you see winter months, winter months is when there isn't really great kind of vegetation which is growing around. You know, you almost think that the earth has kind of shut off the engine, that there is nothing much growing in that sense. But just when the winter months are over, the spring comes, it's almost like the earth is back to life with the vengeance. You know, it's almost, it's completely rejuvenated her itself, right? So what he's making the comparison is that the earth also during those winter months was indulging in introspection while it was completely at peace with itself and when it comes to spring it's back into full bloom and full color so last he says now i will count up to 12 
Now, why is he saying that? Because in the beginning also he says, we will count up to 12. Now he says, I will count up to 12. So Pablo Neruda is not including everyone this time. He's saying that I will count up to 12, not you. And the point that he's making is that, and he says, now you keep quiet and I will go. So basically making the point that I will go while you keep quiet. Basically trying to make the larger point that I had come to give you this message that you need to indulge in introspection and be at peace with yourself. And I will, now that I've given this message, now I will make a move and I will go away. So very important poem, making the larger point about what the world needs to be in order to be at peace with itself. Now, we'll just quickly look at the poetic devices used in this poem. Uh, there is, of course, alliteration. Stop for one second. In a sudden strangeness, SS being used. Hurt hands, referring to the salt uh, gatherer. Uh, then uh, clean clothes, would put on clean clothes, CC. Then there's also the uh, poetic device of repetition, which Pablo Neruda has used in order to emphasize the emotion. Without rush, without engines, you know, there is a sense repetition of the word without. Wars with gas, wars with fire, right? Green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire. So the, the word war being used three times, again, repetition being used as a poetic device in order to emphasize. So that's why as far as this particular poem, Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda is concerned. I hope this is very clear, a very important poem. And I do hope if you get a question from this particular poem, you would be able to do justice to it. Any doubts, any clarifications you need to seek, please write in the comment section. More than happy to reply to them. Thank you very much for watching.